Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Bluffton Holiday Invite. We are at the Lima YMCA. 35 teams are here for this annual event. It's well known in the local swimming community that this is the swimming event that happens every year during Christmas break. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Robin Bolas, and we are into the girls' 200 medley relay. Heat four of six is just about to get into the water, and it's going to be a good day today, Robin. Yeah, Jen, it's great to be here in this fresh smell of glory. It's a great way to uh, kick off the morning. All right, this is who we have in our heat. In lane one for heat five, we have Versailles. In lane two, we have Elida. Lane three, New Bremen. Lane four, Memorial. Lane five, Wayne. Lane six, Minster. Lane seven, Kenton. Lane eight, Botkins. There are some really strong swimmers in this heat. Thanks for uh, helping me. I've got like 17 papers in front of me, and I mentioned we were heading into heat four. No, this is heat five of six. If you've been at a swim meet, you know a lot is going on at all times, and we've got Arlie Anspoker. She just took the lead right away there. Not surprising, very strong backstroker. Absolutely. Arlie is a phenomenal backstroker, and that Elida team is really strong. Many of these teams here today have really strong, four strong swimmers on them. It's going to be a great day. That's right. That's one of the great things about Northwest Ohio local swimming is some of these swimmers we've been watching for years and years. We're now seeing them compete at the high school level. Arlie, a sophomore. Um, Allie Sharp is a freshman, continuing to help Elida keep that lead as we go. Our second place uh, in this heat appears to be between Caroline Whitlatch, another great swimmer, and Lexi Hansen of Minster. A hand it off, hand it off. I'm talking uh, running terms now, <laughs> very close. Avery Bowers from Elida continues to be strong in lane two. Senior from Elida. On her heels is Annie Jiang from New Bremen. Do not ever count Annie Jiang out. She can do just about every stroke there is. It is very close as the last or third swimmers go into the water. Or no, last swimmers. And a reminder, this is heat five of six, so we do have one more heat to determine who is going to be the winner in this. It looks like New Bremen's Olivia Heitkamp. Oh, may have gotten Vivian Elrod on the flip turn there. Vivian is working hard, though, trying to get in there and chase her down. Vivian's just a freshman, and uh, great finish there by New Bremen. New Bremen finishes first in this heat with a time of 2.04.09. Second place is Elida A, 2.04.97. We'll have the fastest heat coming up right next. Heat six of six, the final heat in the girls' 200-yard medley relay. In lane one, it will be Ada with Carly Oldfield. Lane two, Wapakoneta, Katie Bauer. Lane three, Ottawa Glandor, Abby Cross. Lane four, Versailles, Lydia Heck. Lane five, Shawnee with Addison Newman. Lane six, Bluffton's Jenna Downey. Lane seven, Carly Covers, Tegan Fortcamp. And lane eight, Coldwater, Kelsey Brandon. We're starting with the powerhouse uh, leadoffs right here in this race. This is an amazing set of swimmers. Every lane has a really strong backstroker in it. This is going to be a great race. And the flip turn is almost too close to call right there. Carly Oldfield's looking strong out there in lane one, but also down here in lane seven, Tegan Fortcamp from Fort Recovery getting ready to head in the water for these races. It's Kayla Wentz in Ada. Elizabeth Seidner from Wapakoneta, Marissa Beckett from Ottawa Glandorf, Elena Rindler from Versailles, Ansley Newman from Shawnee, Allison Diller from Bluffton, Audra Bopp from Fort Recovery, and Kiara Knapke from Coldwater. Another set of powerhouse swimmers in this race. Yeah, the middle of the pool is looking really strong. Lane seven, though, Fort Recovery is taking the lead and about a body's length ahead. That's Audra Bopp getting ready to pass things off to Joelle Kraut, who's going to do the fly portion of this. But we got to watch lane three or lane one because now we have Lily Baumgartner yes. in the water. Um, state qualifier as a freshman last year, national qualifier in the butterfly. Um, Record holder here at the Lima Y. So that's lane one with Ada's Lily Baumgartner. 
looks to me like lanes one, lanes four with Versailles. Four and lane seven. 26.31 split for Lily Baumgartner in the fly. The fastest of the entire field. Very impressive. But now it's down to the foot turn here and the freestyle finish. And we have a very strong finish from Tiana Mesher of the sale. Tiana should have a really strong day today. She has the opportunity to break a record later in the meet. It's a great warm-up swim for her. Congratulations to the Versailles team. Hello, I'm here with the Versailles girls who just won the medley relay. We have all four up here. How did you guys feel about the race? Y'all start with you. Um, I thought it was pretty okay. Yeah. That's good. Hey, how about you? How did you think? I felt pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. I say I have a question for you. So I was watching in the breaststroke and Shawnee was coming up on you a little bit. Did you see her? How did you feel about that? Um, I didn't really see her. I usually just like try to stay in my own in my own lane, yeah. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. All right, how did you feel about it? Starting off the race? Uh pretty good. Just swim as hard as I can, get the team started. Good. Thank you so much. Won their first event of the day. Thank you for sales girls. We are moving now to heat three of four in the boys 200 yard medley relay. Thanks for joining us here on WOSN for the 2022 Bluffton Holiday Invite, which is sponsored by Wabash Mutual Telephone, the Holiday Swimming Invitational, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. In lane one, we have, we will have Marion Local with Trey Brookhart leading off in lane two, Botkins with Gavin Sanchez. Lane three, Coldwater, Carter May. Lane four, Van Wert, Sam Haug. Lane five, Kenton, Tommy Mustaine. Lane six, Botkins, Reese Astrology. Lane seven, Bath, Cohen Callahan. And lane eight, Piqua, Braden Holt, Holtvolt. I think, Robin, I may have butchered that last name. It was a good attempt, though. <laughs> Much my, my apologies to the, the this family with a cool last name. I'll just leave it at that. I like your last name, but I don't know how to pronounce it. So let's remind our viewers at home of the, um, this is not just a freestyle relay. This is an IM relay. And what are they swimming here? Yeah, so the medley relay starts with the backstroke. So it's all four strokes in swimming and one relay. So you have backstrokers. Normally the swimmers will swim their strongest stroke. So backstroke, it starts, and then goes into the breast, and then the fly, and then the free. And this is heat three of four, so we still will have our fastest heat coming up, which, which could bring us a record-breaking relay, depending on the performance of our swimmers today. At this point here in this heat, pretty close, but lane four is your leader, and that is Van Wert. Sam Haug, of course, a great swimmer, so a great lead off there. Yeah, Sam is great, and uh, sophomore there at Van Wert. He's really been swimming his whole life. He is a definite backstroker. Coldwater taking the lead here at the turn uh, on the breaststroke thing. That's one of the challenges, however, of course, in this relay, is you need four strong swimmers in each of the strokes, and um, some relay teams just have it more than others. Yes, it's really uh, it's really special when you can have really four strong swimmers on all the strokes. We do want to keep an eye, though, on lane four because Jaden Welker will be the anchor for Van Wert, another very, very strong swimmer, national, YMCA national qualifier. Right now, Coldwater is your leader here in lane three from the fly part. That's Quinn Brandon, just a freshman. But you know, in the world of swimming, you can't really say just a freshman. No. I mean, these guys have been swimming since they were like four or five years old. Yeah, at this point, they have more swimming career behind them than they have left in front of them, so. Okay, we got our anchors in the water, and here's where we yes. want to keep an eye on lane four, Jaden Welker. He's up against freshman Eddie Obringer from Coldwater in lane three, and Rex Paquin, a senior from Kenton in lane five. Van Wert's bringing it in. Looks like they're going to win this heat. Wow. Jaden Welker swam a 23 11. Uh -huh. on that. What a split. That is great. What a great start off for this race. So that gives it to Van Wert with a time of 157 55. So we mentioned it earlier, Jen, the record here is the meet record for this is a 141.93. It was set in 2011 by the Shawnee High School team. 
of Eric Rizlovato, one of the Curl brothers, Diltz and Jay Ellis. And so it could be, could go down today. We'll see what kind of swimming potential they're in. It could go to either Wapak or St. Mary's in lanes four or five, but don't count out the Bluffton team in lane three. That's right, these guys all come in here. We already have Wapakoneta coming in with the seed time faster than the record, as is St. Mary's Memorial. And you've mentioned Bluffton, they come in with a 145.30, but we know the quality of these swimmers and they really haven't had a chance uh, to get going in their season yet for high school. So we could see some great things happening there. Uh, somebody you know, Robin Bullis, by the name of Jackson Bullis, will be leading off backstroke. Good, solid backstroker. Yeah, no, these, uh, the Bluffton team and the Wapak boys, they train together, um, they've swam together their entire lives, and it's gonna be a great race. So in lane one, we have Salinas, Brock Wally. In lane two, Dylan Geiswine from Ottawa Glandorf. Lane three, Jackson Bullis of Bluffton. Lane four, Owen Becker of Wapakoneta. Lane five, Reese Triplett of St. Mary's. Lane six, Mason Latham of Shawnee. Lane seven, Jake Wilkson of Wayne. And lane eight, Isaiah Wackoff of Wapakoneta B. Robin's on her feet because that's what you got to do here in a crowded stands as we watch these kids take off. And white water is going. <laughs> Means they're moving really fast. The underwater makes a difference in the backstroke. And we've got Jackson Bullis as your leader right now. Owen Becker is trying to scale in right behind him, but Jackson's going to hand that off to Riley Verb, another super solid swimmer in the first place spot. Ross Honigford chasing him down. We know that Honigford name well, but we also know the verb name very well in swimming. This is so exciting, and uh, you know, the St. Mary's team as well, they, they swim against us in summer swim, and so. That's right, that's Marcus McLean who is swimming for St. Mary's, another very, very good swimmer. Connor Latham from Shawnee is coming right behind as well in lane six, but it's Bluffton that continues, and that's Xavier Diller in the water now. Lane four, Alex Honigford, and lane five from St. Mary's, Griffin Lubke. These are names we say over and over and over again in the swimming world. Yeah, the St. Mary's team with the triplet brothers, they're so strong. Xavier Diller doing a nice job of really holding off Alex Honigford to the end. Alex came up there. Now we've got Luke Weirwell as our anchor. Charles Wright, the anchor for Bluffton, and Bradley Triplett is the anchor for St. Mary's Memorial. Of course, we want to keep our eyes on the clock. Remember, 141.93 is the current record. Luke Weirwell bringing it in for Wapakoneta with a 143.07. So the record will not go down today, but Wapakoneta is your winner in the boys' 200 medley relay. Second place going to Bluffton, 144.88 time drop for them. And third place, St. Mary's Memorial, 140.98. You are watching the Holiday Swimming Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We'll be right back with the individual events starting with the girls' 200-yard freestyle. Hello, I'm here with the Wapak Boys Relay who just won the medley relay. Can I have you guys just introduce yourself and say what stroke you swim? I'm Alex Huntingford and I swam butterfly. Ross Huntingford and I did brush stroke. I'm Luke Rewell and I swam the free. I'm Owen Becker and I did the backstroke. Here, look, Luke, I'll ask you first. How did you feel the event went? I felt like the event went really well. I was really happy with the time I was able to put up. Here, I'll ask Alex. So when you dove in, you guys were a little behind. How did you feel about that? Uh, it didn't really bother me. Just I know that Luke's anchoring us, and I can always trust in Luke. And I don't do fly much, so I didn't really know how it was going to go. So I kind of just did my best, and I knew that Luke would finish it off. Well, good job today, boys. Thank you for coming. Welcome back to the Bluffton Holiday Invitational here at the Lima YMCA. You're watching the Holiday Swimming Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. I'm Jennifer Becker, alongside Robin Bullis, and this is heat seven of seven in the girls 200 yard freestyle. In lane one, it's Audra Buck, the senior from Fort Recovery. In lane two, Abby Kloss, a senior from Ottawa Glendorf. Lane three, Izzy Stecksholdy, 
a junior from Bluffton. Lane four, Haley Childs, a sophomore from Van Wert. Lane five, Annie Jang, a senior from New Bremen. Lane six, Kelly May, freshman from Coldwater. Lane seven, Morgan Meg, a junior from Ottawa Glandorf. And lane eight, Erica Bell, a sophomore from Shawnee. We saw sprints before in the relays. We have shifted gears now. We are not sprinting, though I'm convinced that some of these fast 200 uh, swimmers pretty much sprint this entire race. Yeah, the 200 is eight links of the pool, eight um, down and backs, and they all have a different strategy for how they make it through this 200. Annie Jang from New Bremen is your current leader right now. She had a split time of 28.20. To put that into perspective, we will have 50 free swimmers who will not swim 28 seconds Absolutely in their in, in to total race. Annie Jan, you talk about different uh, methods to swim this race, which the strokes are different, the style of when you're going to swim, but I see a lot of smoothness in her stroke right now. She's also a 500 swimmer, and she doesn't do bad in the sprints. And it's interesting, she is breathing every stroke, um, which is how she started this, and it will be interesting to see if she keeps that up. That's part of her pace, is to breathe every stroke. Of course, there's a lot of philosophy on how much breath a swimmer needs and when to get that breath. Uh, as we said before, she's really a distant swimmer. We're going to see her in the 500 later on. Um, well, actually, to be honest, we may not see her on the broadcast. The live streamers will see her because she's in no time in the 500, which means she's going to be put into a heat all by herself. Uh, she's kind of in a heat all by herself right now here in the 200, even though it's the fastest heat. Yeah, Jen, it's great that you pointed out about the no time. So at this point in the season, if a swimmer hasn't yet, maybe they did a fall sport or um, they swam with their Y teams or USA teams a little bit longer before high school started, and they haven't swam yet, they have no time. So Annie uh, has a time in this one, but as you mentioned, later she will not. Time drop for her in this one. She gets first place with a time of 2.04.07. Angie Yang, the senior from New Bremen. We've been watching her swim for four years. And she's kicking off. It's already kicked off a bit, but her senior season is looking pretty good. Second place, Izzy Steckschulde from Bluffton with a 2.09.7. Third place, Kelly May. That May name is very well known in the swimming world in cold water with a time of 2.09.98. And fourth place, Haley Childs, the sophomore from Van Wert with a time of 2.10.03. Hello, I'm here with Annie Jane from New Bremen who just won the 200 freestyle. How did you feel? Um, that last 50 was a little rough, but it was, it was fine. Yeah, it's like right around my uh, goal time that I was hoping to hit this time of the year. That's good, that's good. Um, do you, so do you train for the 200? Is that an event you train for? Yes, yeah, that's my main event. My other event is the 500 freestyle, but yeah, 200 free is my main event. Good, long distance swimmer. Thank you for swimming. Good luck for the rest of your events. Thank you so much. It's time now for the fastest heat in the boys 200 yard freestyle. This is heat five of five. However, Robin, we've already had a lightning fast swimmer back in heat two. Jarrett Payne of Sydney already broke this record, which was 149.38. It's now 143.65. And here's who's chasing him at the point. Lucas Bell, lane one from Bath. Lane two, Carter Hale of Kenton. Lane three, Daniel Coe of Shawnee. Lane four, Sam Haug of Van Wert. Lane five, Marcus McLean of St. Mary's. Lane six, Tyson Rosengarten of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane seven, Landon Armstrong of Bluffton. And lane eight, Jake Fernandez of Wayne. And these are some strong swimmers, but honestly, none of them come in with a time even close to what Jarrett Payne just swam. No, Jen, but uh, there's some really tight swims here at the start of this race. Daniel Coe of Shawnee and Sam Haug almost swimming side by side here. Daniel Coe, a football player. Brings his, uh, and tennis player, brings that strength in Sam, a strong, strong swimmer. Looks like Daniel may have the slight edge here as we near the halfway point. Actually, I just miscalled that entire thing, didn't I? That is Sam Haug and Marcus McLean. Daniel Coe, good swimmer. He's in lane three. Those of you at home going, what you talking about? Sam's been the lead the whole time. So I stand corrected. Sam Haug is your leader at this point with Marcus McLean coming in right behind him. And Landon Armstrong in lane seven, state qualifier for cross country, so he's a multi-sport athlete. Watch, watch him sneaking up here on Marcus, Marcus. McLean 
at that flip turn. He just about got him and had it. Look at Landon. You cannot discount the endurance that you get with cross country swimming. And he came to the team a little bit late this year because of his state qualifying for cross country. Mm. So his swim training is a couple of weeks behind everybody else. So Sam Haug is making his way towards the finish line and looks like he is going to be your winner of this heat with a time of 158.77. Second place in this heat was Landon Armstrong who came back to overcome that with a time of 159.92. But your overall winner in the boys 200 freestyle belongs to Jared Payne from Sydney, the new record holder with a time of 143.65. Hi, I'm here with Jarrett Payne from Sydney who just won the 200 yard freestyle and broke the meet record by almost six seconds. How are you feeling while you swam? Uh, really tired, I guess, kind of that last 50, but I felt strong in the first 50 and then building into that uh, second 50 and then raced the last 100 as fast as I possibly could. So for a fun fact for you guys at home who didn't get to see him swim, he actually was in heat two with a no time instead of having a time. Um, how did you feel swimming against people who were literally being lapped by you? Uh, it's out of the norm for me because I typically don't get seated with no times, but I just got to keep remembering myself to just swim my own race, and that's how you go fast, I guess. Really good. So Jared also broke two records last year. What were those two records? Uh, the 200 IM and the 100 back. Very good. He will also be swimming the 100 free. We'll see. Are you going to try to break that record, too? Uh, I'm swimming the 100 fly, actually, but, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try to get that record. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. We move now to heat four of four in the girls' 200-yard IM. In lane one, it will be Sophie James of St. Mary's. Lane two, Quinn Layfeld of St. Henry. Lane three, Addison Newman of Shawnee. Lane four, Marissa Beckett of Ottawa Glendorf. Lane five is open. Lane six, Tegan Fortcamp of Fort Recovery. Lane seven, Allison Diller of Bluffton. And lane eight, Caroline Whitlatch of New Bremen. And Robin, as we were discussing before we came up back on here on the broadcast, this is an intense, uh, intense race. Every stroke, and you just got to go fast. Addison Newman, your current leader here, transferred from, actually moved, the family moved from Wapakoneta to Shawnee. So as a senior now, she is swimming for the Shawnee Indians. She is in the lead, but look at the backstroke of Marissa Beckett from Ottawa Glandorf, working to try to sneak up there next to her. Addison Newman, though, putting in nothing against Marissa. Great, great swimmer, but I've been watching Addison's work that she's been pointing in before the season started and very, very focused. Of course, Marissa Beckett, we watched her shine in her junior year last year for OG and certainly expect the same from her right now. These ladies very close here as they turn to the breaststroke, which is a uh, bright spot for both of them. Addison Newman making it to nationals in the Y in the breaststroke. And she is also a great freestyler. So that's what's coming up next is the freestyle. But you know, in this race, you can be an incredible freestyler, but man, those arms are heavy when you get to this point. We watch Marissa Beckett take the lead over Addison in this last heat. Now, Addison Newman, a Division I state qualifier last year in the 50 free. But as we said before, Marissa Beckett, also a very, very strong swimmer. Two seventeen thirty-one is the seed time that she came in with, and our record is a two fourteen thirty-one. Won't be broken today. Still a good time for Marissa Beckett. She is your winner in the girls 200 IM with a time of 2.18.94. Second place going to Addison Newman with a time of 2.22.12. Third place out of Fort Recovery, Tegan Fortcamp with a 2.25.98. All right, we are moving now 
to the fastest heat of the boys, 200 yard IM. The record holder is Jarrett Payne, who just set the 200 free record minutes ago here in this pool. Yes, but not in this event today. That's right, he is not swimming this event today, which probably is a sigh of relief for the eight men who are about to swim in this final heat. In lane one, it's Corey Regal of Wayne. Lane two, Andy Jiang of New Bremen. We saw his sister swim not long ago, winning the 200 free. Lane three, Zach Ahrens of Versailles. Lane four, Griffin Lutke of St. Mary's. Lane five, Riley Burb of Bluffton. Burb, sound like I said Burb. Burb, Burb. Lane six, Jackson Newcomb of Salina. Lane seven, Colin Steffen of Ottawa Landorf. And lane eight, Thomas Coe of Shawnee. 203-93, your top time coming in. That's Griffin Lidke of St. Mary's out of lane four. A lot of power just went in the water there. Starting out with the butterfly. Lane two has a slight edge right now, and that's Andy Jiang from New Bremen. As we talked before in the girls' race, this is four different strokes, which means some of these swimmers have a stroke they're really good at. Other ones are just good at all of them. Yeah, Jen, and you know, sometimes you'll see a, a flyer come out really, really strong, but then they lose it because they've lost all their power on that first stroke. And Jen with a split time of 24.54 in that uh, leadoff lap of the race, still leading at that flip turn. He comes in with a seat time of 208.66. Second place looking quite close. Lanes three and lanes five. That's Zach Aarons of Versailles and Riley Verb of Bluffton. Riley Verb, a state qualifier last year. Another strong swimmer. Yeah, he's a strong swimmer, backstroke. And then this is his, his especially right here is the breaststroke. Riley Verb should come back really strong here. Now, you know what? We just saw a different flip turn from him than we saw from Zach Aarons. And you'll see that in the IM. There are different flip turn styles. There are, especially coming out of that backstroke into the breaststroke. Andy Jean still your leader here in lane two from New Bremen. But as you mentioned, Riley Verb, a very strong breaststroker. Zach Aarons, also a strong breaststroker as well from Versailles. Jane is in the lead. Aarons is second. Riley Verb is third. But it is quite close as they get ready for the freestyle. Yeah, this will be an interesting one. We didn't, uh, looks like Andy is slowing up a little he knows where he is he can see when he turns his head he's not there's a lot of this meat left today and he's got more to swim so he's not gonna waste it all here if he doesn't need to but but the guys vying for second i might have to push a little harder and on that flip turn we saw riley verb take the lead and he's gonna finish in second place the second place finish for bluffton from this senior with a time of 2.0490. So Andy Jiang up in lane two is your winner with a time of two minutes flat, 0.23. Second place goes to Riley Verb from Bluffton, 2.04.9. And third place in lane three, Zach Aarons of Versailles, 2.0724. We're going to head to break. You're watching the Holiday Swimming Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Hello, I'm here with Andy Jane from New Bremen who just won the Tuner I Am. How were you feeling through the event coming from an outside lane? Oh, it was really rough. I tried my hardest through that whole entire thing and I just tried to drop time. That's good, that's good. What is, what is your strongest event, like my strongest stroke in the event? Uh, probably fly, flying back, yeah. Do you have any like um, strategy going in knowing that fly is your best event and that is the first stroke? Uh, I just try to go out fast and try to keep that pace the whole entire time. Good, thank you so much. Good luck on the rest of your events. Welcome back, WSN viewers, to the Holiday Swimming Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We have moved into the sprints, and this is heat 14 of 16 in the girls' 50 freestyle. In lane one, it's Tyra McLean of Van Wert. Lane two, Sydney Kalaskowitz of Bath. Lane three, Alyssa Stammen of St. Henry. Lane four, Lucy Ferreira Rodriguez of Wapakoneta. Lane five, Lexi Hansen of Minster. Lane six, Josie Evers of St. Henry. Lane seven, Lucy Legenkamp of Coldwater. And lane eight, Amelia Sementinger of Wapakoneta. And you just got all those names in as they're about to come in for the finish. It's been a great series of 50s so far. A lot of time drops. Let's see what happens here in the last three heats. 
Your winner for this heat in a 28.93 is Lexi Hansen of Minster. 28.93, that's your winner there. Moving on to heat 15 of 16. In lane one, it's Caitlin Bowden of Ada. Lane two, Ansley Newman of Shawnee. Lane three, Sadie Lucas of Fairbanks. Lane four, Olivia Heitkamp of New Bremen. Lane five, Kayla Frost of Shawnee. Lane six, Ella Armstrong of Bluffton. Lane seven, Callie Sutton of Wapakoneta. And lane eight, Paige Brinkman of LCC. You know, there's still one more heat to go in this event, but there are some phenomenal 50 freestylers in this event. In this heat, 15 of 16, you can tell that the whole lane is tight. It's gonna be right down to the wall. This really comes down to technique. Flip turns, mo moves, and that's how you win a 50 freestyle. And in this case, your winner of this heat, of course, this heat is Olivia Heitkamp of New Bremen with a time of 27.61. Now, folks, we have to remember, as we are going into this fastest heat, Kylie Niekamp already swam a 26.87. 26.87 is your top as of right now. Heat 16 of 16, Olivia Fenbert from Otto Glandorf in one, Brooklyn Bourne of Salina in two, Carly Oldfield from Ada in three, Tiana Mesher of Versailles in four, Jenna Downey of Bluffton in five, Joelle Hope of Fort Recovery in six, Lillian Watkins of Sydney in seven, and Sierra Rupert of St. Mary's in eight. This is a great heat as well. You can see they're all fast. Jen, you were mentioning what it takes to win this race. It also takes no breathing. Phenomenal 53 swimmers will only breathe twice. Tiana Mesher, I did not see breaths from her, and a 24. Point six one, a twenty four point six one is what Tiana Mesher just swam, just missing. I mean, really close to the twenty four point oh eight was Emily Murphy's record from back in twenty thirteen. So there's your winner of this fifty free in the girls, Tiana Mesher, the senior from Versailles in a time of twenty four six one. Bluffton's Jenna Downey, just a freshman, second place with a twenty five point seven nine. Hello, I'm here with Tiana Meshers from Versailles, who just won the 50 free. How are you feeling right now? Um, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> did you come in, I mean, you were seated first. Did you come in with a game plan to win? Was there anybody you really were worried about at all? Um, I mean, I kind of just try to focus on myself. I don't, it's mainly just chasing PRs, uh, so I don't really pay attention to people around me, so. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Was, um, was that near your goal time today? I know you swim a little bit faster. Was this like, I mean, I know, in the beginning of the season, were you hoping for something better? Or were you happy with what you got? Um, I think I was hoping for something a little bit better. I think two weeks ago I went a, kind of a lot faster, but it's not too bad. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. Good luck in the rest of your events. Thanks. Thank you. Moving quickly now to Heat 12 of 13. In lane one is Daniel Waymeyer of Versailles. Lane two, Carter Cleaves of Shawnee. Lane three, Xavier Diller of Bluffton. Lane four, Charles Wright of Bluffton. Lane five, Brock Wally of Salina. Lane six, Braxton Brewer of Sydney. Lane seven, Ian Longwell of Wayne. And lane eight, Wyatt Mallett of Shawnee. Most of these swimmers are 25 or below. No seniors in this no group either. No seniors in this group. The sprinter group in Northwest Ohio is very strong. It's just going to be a photo oh, finish. Wow, take a look at this. Their strokes are insane. Goodness. Whew. And it goes to Carter Cleaves up there in lane two with a 24.85, 24.93 from Bluffton's Charles Wright in lane two. Four. All right, here we go. Heat 13 of 13. In lane one, it's Landon Stoller of Bath. Lane two, Julian Jordan of Wapakoneta. Lane three, Owen Becker of Wapakoneta. Lane four, Luke Weirwell of Wapakoneta. Lane five, Jackson T. Bullis of Bluffton. Lane six, Gannon Casebolt of Wapakoneta. Lane seven, Bradley Triplett of St. Mary's. And lane eight, Isaiah Wackoff of Wapakoneta. Here they go. These swimmers swim together all the time, and this is the event that they love to compete in. The flip turn, the stroke, the breathing, the finish keys here look who's coming out ahead it's luke Weirwell. no surprise luke he is, so is quite a swimmer with a time of 22.43 luke Weirwell is your winner hats off to jackson bullis that's his second second place of this meet the freshman from bluffton and the son of my color commentator over here jackson bullis with a time of 22.95 Obviously one to watch, as is Luke, who is only a junior.
Welcome back, WOSN viewers, to the Holiday Swimming Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We also want to remind you that TV44 and WOSN are nonprofit stations, and we rely on your donations. You can donate online at WTLW.com forward slash donate. Get that in by the end of the year if you are able to count that on your taxes. This is heat four of five in the girls' 100-yard butterfly. Lane one, Morgan Mag of Ottawa Glendorf. Lane two, Sophie James of St. Mary's. Lane three, Harley Eilerman of Fort Lormie. Lane four, Macy Wilson of Pandora Gilboa. Lane five, Lucy Holman of New Bremen. Lane six, Bella Buccio of Botkins. Lane seven, Avery Bowers of Elida. And lane eight, Lily Cordnier of Versailles. And lane six. Bella has really pulled out in front. She's a freshman at Bopkins. Her seed time in this event is a 1-10-10. She does have a strong multi-body length lead over the rest of the field. She's in a tech suit. They're not all in tech suits. You know, we talk about how well the tech suit helps people. Um, as a swim parent, I would say both physically and mentally, it does create a potential advantage. Yes, and uh, experienced swimmers really take seriously when they wear their tech suits and when they don't. It makes a difference, I agree with you. And Bella is your winner in this 104.39. Take a look at that. Came in with a 110 and just swam a 104. Surpasses Jenna Downey, who swam a 104.58 back in heat two. So we have a 104.39 as your current top time. Now heat five of five in lane one is June Essinger of Bluffton. Lane two, Cameo Cedarleaf of Minster. Lane three, Katie Bauer of Wapakoneta. Lane four, Lily Baumgartner of Ada. Lane five, Ava Shardo of Versailles. Lane six, Sadie Lucas of Fairbanks. Lane seven, Izzy Byer of Coldwater. And lane eight, Tegan Fort Camp of Fort Recovery. The meet record is a 58.52 set back in 2010 by Emily Murphy. Keep your eye on lane four. Yeah, Lily Baumgartner, we've talked about her before. She's a zone qualifier, why, why, why I'm a Y swimmer, national qualifier for Y. State qualifier as a freshman last year, making it to finals in this race. And she comes in with a time that's faster than the record, but this is the Christmas break season, so, and she is not wearing a tech suit. A lot of different aspects in here. She's such a beautiful swimmer though. Her fly stroke is phenomenal, she too. Spent some time this summer at Kenyon College summer camp, um, really perfecting her work in the butterfly. Let's see what she comes in at. All right, 53, 54, 55, 56. Will she, she, oh goodness, 57, 86. Lily Bomber. I just, this is one of the things I love about watching her swim. She sees what needs to happen and she just does it. She just does it. 57, 86, just. Broke the record set back in 2010 by Emily Murphy, a Olympics uh, trials qualifier in the 50 free, a standout swimmer in everything. Congratulations to sophomore Lily Baumgartner from Ada with a record setting time of 57.86 seconds. Hello, I'm here with Lily Baumgartner from Ada who just won the 100 butterfly and broke the record. How are you feeling through the swim? Uh, very excited. I kept telling myself to go faster, so that's how I think I got it. That's a good way to go. So I saw your time coming in. was It already was broken, the record, right? Yeah. So was your goal to swim even faster, or was it just to swim an even time to break the record? My Yeah, my goal was just to get break the record. It didn't have to be like by a lot. It was just to get it. So, yeah. When you're swimming, do you ever like turn and see that nobody's there, and do you like feel good about that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, especially when their times are closer and you can't see them, yeah, I, it feels good. That's a good feeling. Well, thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. This is heat two of three in the boys' 100-yard butterfly. This is what you, the WSN viewers, just missed. Jarrett Payne of Sydney just set the meet record in heat one with a time of 50.37. Now we are watching heat two of three. In lane one, it's Colin Flickover of Ottawa Glandor. Lane two, Andrew Baldoff of Lima Central Catholic. Lane three, Ross Honningford of Wapakoneta. Lane four, Charles Wright of Bluffton. Lane five, Michael Menke of Versailles. Lane six, CJ McCall of Bluffton. Lane seven, Carson Dingus of Coldwater. And lane eight, Jace Utrup of Ottawa Glendale. Yeah, this is an interesting group of swimmers. One senior, or two seniors, I'm sorry, in lane one and lane six. Pulling ahead in the lead right now is lane five, Michael Menke from Versailles, the sophomore. This is really a, quite the race. I mean, you 
Butterfly is that type of race that you either love or hate. You're either really good at it or you work on it. But this second 50 is what I always hear the swimmers say is the top parts of this race, that 100 fly, the second 50. Yeah, you can sometimes see the swimmer actually hit the wall, as my son refers to it. <laughs> 101.93 is the winning time in this heat with Michael Mankey of Versailles. 101.93 in this heat two of three. We'll move next into the fastest heat, lane heat three of three. Remember, Jared Payne has already broken the meet record with a time of 50.37. He did that out of heat one. Here's who we have swimming now, Grady Baumgartner of Wayne in one, Grady Shoblin of McComb in two, Thomas Coe of Shawnee in three, Jaden Welker of Van Wert in four, Andy Jang of New Bremen in five, Marcus McLean of St. Mary's in six, Landon Stoller of Bath in seven, and Wyatt Kendall of Kenton in eight. So according to the sea times, Jaden Welker in lane four should really dominate this whole race. But do not forget Andy Jane right next to him from New Bremen, the sophomore from New Bremen. We have seen him have significant time drops all day in all of his events. And Andy is going to pull out ahead of Jaden Welker after that turn. What? That is just a testament to the importance of the underwater swim and how much you can accomplish with that. Powerful underwater swim there and see what's going to happen with the next pull out. Andy, and he's extending that lead. He is. It's been so much fun to watch his sister swim these past few years and now to see Andy coming up and being strong again. A 53.25 will take this heat but won't take the race. So Andy Jane finishing first in this heat with a time of 53.25. Jaden Walker right next to him, a 55.48. But your winner in the boys' 100-yard butterfly is Jarrett Payne, 50.37, the new record holder at the Holiday Invite. Hello, I'm here again with Jarrett Payne from Sydney, just won the 100 butterfly. You feeling good? Uh, yeah, pretty good. A little tired now, but yeah, pretty good. He broke the meet record. I mean, we talked about it before. We talked about going in. So. Your mindset was going in to get it, but again, you were in a no-time heat. Do you struggle swimming again, like next to people that aren't as fast as you? Um, it's very unusual for me, but I do enjoy swimming. You know, makes me get in my own head sometimes too. But you just gotta really focus on yourself in that moment. Do you have any more events finishing up, or is this the end? Uh, just 50 free in the relay. That's it. Good luck today, and congratulations. The Holiday Swimming Invitational is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone on WOSN, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. I'm Jennifer Beck. I've got Robin Bullis alongside with me, and this is heat 13 of 14 in the girls, 100 free. No one in lane one. We've got RM Eob from Shawnee in two, Joel Kalp from Port Recovery in three, Olivia Heitkamp from New Bremen in four, Kayla Frost from Shawnee in five, Erica Bell from Shawnee in six, Ali Sharp from Elida in seven, and Kinley Howe from Kenton in eight. And our top swimmer so far is Arlie Amsbroker from Elida, who's already swum a 58-3-8 in a previous heat. And it looks like lane three, Joelle Kopp from Fort Recovery, the sophomore, is gonna come in with a 29 second split there. You want us, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say off the wall, they caught her. Everybody in the other lanes caught up with her. Well, and that's the thing, the flip turn is so important here. And it looks like, okay, our, our board has just jumped to heat 14, but we are actually in heat 13 right now. Um, so the names that you are seeing are not accurate. Again, we've got Eob in two, Kalp in three, Heitkamp in four, Frost in five, Bell in six, Sharp in seven, and Howe in eight. And that, whoa, close. Four. Wow. Um, lane four, Olivia Heitkamp, 10205. And then lane three, Kalp from Fort Recovery, 102.25. So 102.05 in this. That's your second fastest time as of right now. Our fastest time still is Arla Amspoker from Elida with a time of 58.38. And I predict we're gonna have a little bit of a pause right now because we do have to figure out some stuff here with the scoreboard. Yep. Yep, they are moving right ahead here. Uh, I also want to just mention the record in this event again is a 
Addie Newman, lane five, 54.89. Tiana Mesher, lane four, a 52.18. Yes. We have Pey Gay Peyton Gable of St. Mary's in one, Lydia Hecht of Versailles in two, Taylor Knott of Ottawa Blender of three, Tiana Mesher of Versailles in four, Addie Newman of Shawnee in five, Carly Oldfield of Ada in six, Kiara Knacky of Coldwater seven, and Delaney Buxton of Kenton in eight. This is your fastest heat. Coming into the first 50, Tiana is in the lead, but do not count out Addie Newman. Addie Newman is such a racer. The thing about Addie is she'll see Tiana, and she will just want to chase her down. She'll want to use this to her advantage. Tiana is strong. Take a look at that kick, the pull, and the flip turn in the underwater. She's off, got it all going. Off the wall, she is an entire body length plus in front of Addie Newman. Let's see if she's going to get the record. Her seat time was a 52.18. 53-52, Tiana Mesher. That's the record. She's your new record holder in the girls' holiday invite, overtaking Abby Trevere's record from 1999. 54-10, a time of 53-52 is your record holder. Hello, we're back again with Tiana Mesher from Versailles. Just broke the record from 1999 of the 100 freestyle. What was your time? Um, 53.5 point something. So on your sheet, you swam a little faster. How do you feel? I know that's not your fastest swim. Are you still okay with that? I mean, you did break the record still. Yeah, I'm pretty okay with that swim. It, it felt really good, um, especially for not being tapered. So I think once Classics comes and I'm a little bit tapered, I'll be able to go PR. So. You looked great out there. Did you have any nervousness? I mean, most of the times next year we're not really even close to your time. Did you feel at all like, oh, people are coming up at me, or did you just feel like you were swimming right through? Um, I felt pretty good. I, I don't like to pay attention to the people around me, or else I start like thinking about that too much. But uh, yeah, some good answers and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, now it's time for heat ten of eleven in the boys' one hundred free. We have Grady Baumgartner of Wayne in lane one, Alex Nelson of Versailles in two, Daniel Waymeyer of Versailles in three, Jake Fernandez of Wayne in four, Ian Loggle of Wayne in five, Daxton Truman of Bath in six, Oliver Schmerge of Botkins in seven, and Wyatt Mallet of Shawnee in eight. And we just saw a 58-9-3 from Christian Ackerman, which could contend with what we've got here. Absolutely, he could definitely have been in this heat. And into the wall, they are all together, very tight. Every one of those splits was under 30 seconds. That's what you like to see in this event. Of course, this is about the turns. It's about the underwater. We've got a, quite a few different styles of breathing and strokes going on, but you see that a lot in boys' freestyle swimming. Flip turn has lanes two and lane four quite close. Alex Nelson of Versailles in two, Jake Fernandez of Wayne in four. Jake Fernandez, 57.05, that's your winner in this heat. Next, we've got the fastest heat, heat 11 of 11, and we have to remember Luke Weirwell has already swum a 59.3. Uh, 49. A 49, oh my goodness, what am I thinking here? 49.32, had to drink a little more coffee here, <laughs> get my focus on it. Brock Wally of Salina is in lane one. Grady Stefan of Otter Blandorf is two. Jackson Newcomb of Salina is in three. Gannon Casebold of Wapakoneta four. Sam Howland of Van Wert five. Landon Armstrong of Bluffton six. Carter Gale of Kenton in seven. Lucas Bell of Bath in eight. They are off and going, chasing Luke's time of a 49.32. That's what Luke Rural of Wapakoneta swam earlier in this race. And it looks like coming into the 50, we're going to have Jackson Newcomb, the freshman from Salina, into the wall first, but he's got the Wapak boys coming for him. All right, so folks, you didn't, you may, if you were on the live stream, you saw it, but here on our broadcast, you didn't see it. Luke Rubel had a 23 second split when he swam this in one of the previous heats. He was getting loud here because lanes two, three, and four, Newcomb, Case Bull, and Howe are going for it. Jackson Newcomb, freshman, from Salina, oh, so close. A 50.96 is what he got. 49.32 from Luke Earl of Wapakoneta is still your winner in this race, the boys 100 free. We will be right back. You're watching the Holiday Swimming Invitation presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We're, thanks for watching right here on WOSN. We'll be back in a moment.
you are watching the 2022 Holiday Swimming Invitational here on WLSN, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. After a short break, we are jumping back into the pool with the girls' 500-yard freestyle. We've already had two heats of this event, and now it's time for heat three of four. However, heat four is actually a combined heat with heat one of the boys. So this is your fastest heat that we will have today. And here are our contenders in the pool. In lane one, Vivian Elrod of Elida. Lane two, Kelly May of Coldwater. Both are freshmen. Both have a lot of swimming experience. Lane three, Marissa Beckett of Ottawa Glendorf. She's a senior. Lane four, Haley Childs of Van Wert. Lane five, Sierra Rupert of St. Mary's. Lane six, Katie Kaplinger of Wayne. In lane seven, Annie Jang of New Bremen. And in lane eight, Haley Miller of Kaleida. Jen, these are some really fast and experienced swimmers of the 500. This is going to be a fun one to watch. 528-28 is the record set back in 2006 by Heather Easley. Our fastest seed time coming in comes from Haley Childs of Van Wert with a 547. However, Annie Jang is actually on no time that got moved into this heat because there was an open spot. We've already seen her win the 200 free in hand, handy fashion. And so we're now we're going to watch in the 500. You can see the, the um, card, card number people down at the end. Very important part of this is to have the, uh, the, the card holders at the end to help the swimmers not have to pay so much attention to thinking about where they are in this race. Yeah, the lap counters are important. And uh, I've always thought my son is a sprinter. He does not do distance or mid-distance at all. But if I was a 500 swimmer, Jen, I would come up with my lap card person like if I'm on my pace, keep it in the middle. That's right. If I'm off, go to the right. If I need to go faster, slower, go to the left. I would have a strategy with, with mm -hmm. that card. Nobody seems to use that, though. So. Well, and, and, and coaches will train that because um, my youngest daughter, Abby, who you are actually seeing today as our sideline reporter, was a swimmer until she just recently graduated from high school, and she did 500s for a while. And that was it. It was up and down, left and right still. And it was a responsibility of that lap counter to be paying attention to the splits to know what to be telling these swimmers. Now, the swimmers also will, when they're, when they're breathing to the one side, they'll also be paying attention to the scoreboard to help them figure out where they are in this race. Yeah, I've seen, uh, we were just talking on the way up here today, uh, meet that we were at two weekends ago in Mason, Ohio. The number fell off the stick. Oh, really? At, early the in the race, into the water. <laughs> and so they had to, it was all on the swimmer then to remember what lap they were on. Which may seem easy, but it's actually not very easy I wouldn't when you're think in so. the water. And you might just think, what, what lap was that? What was I on? And then quickly you, you've forgotten. You have to try to figure out from the scoreboard. Well, according to our scoreboard, as of right now, we have a leader. Well, it looks pretty close. Annie Jang in lane seven and Sierra Rupert in lane five are virtually neck and neck, except it looks like Annie gets her on the flip turns. I saw that in the last lap, but then Sierra comes back on the straightaway. Straightaway isn't a track term I'm bringing out here um, to, uh, to catch up there. Yeah, but they are pretty much in sync on their strokes. It'll be interesting to see if they uh, pace each other or when one of them pulls out first. There is strategy involved in the 500 free. These swimmers know when to speed up, when to slow down, when to be on a certain pace, and they know where they want to be. Annie is a senior. Sierra is a junior. Both have a lot of racing experience. And again, on the flip turn, we saw Annie kick it out and get ahead by just a tad bit. You know, it's interesting. Annie turns her head to look at the scoreboard side, and Sierra can't see her. But then when they come back, Sierra can see Annie, but Annie can't see Sierra. You know, that's the thing about swimming, that if you're not a swimmer, you've never experienced. Unlike, you know, if you're in track, you can look around. You, know, you don't really look behind you. But you have a vantage point going on uh, that's happening. In swimming, you're literally looking in the water. In some cases, the more you look, the worse it is for your, for your race. Yeah, it will definitely slow you down. They clearly have a uh, trained pattern here and a rhythm of when they stroke and when they turn their head. Okay, so we are over the halfway mark at this point. 
Um, you can see the number 13 is making its way into the water. Um, also not unusual in a race like this. We're starting to get a big disparity over our leaders and who's behind. This is, this is, this is not a race for everyone. Uh, would your son Jackson want to be swimming this race? No, no, not at all. <laughs> Well, while we are getting uh, along in this race, want to give us some updates on where we are in this meet at this point score-wise? Sure. So these scores were as of uh, the break, so up to the 500. We all start with 10th place, Minster High School with 40 points, 9th, Elida High School with 48, Coldwater High School is in 8th place with 50, 7th is Shawnee High School with 71 points, 6th place, Fort Recovery High School with 81 points, 5th place, New Bremen High School with 88, Fourth is Ada High School with 91. Third place, this is for the women, Ottawa Glandorf, 101. Second, Bluffton High School with 110, the host school. And in first place right now, we have Versailles High School, 133 points for the women. We have definitely talked about Versailles a lot today, but you mentioned Bluffton, the host school, and I always love to talk about the story that Bluffton didn't even have a swim team official until Last year or the year before? That's right, yes. They started with a club team about three years ago, or maybe four years ago. COVID makes things kind of blurry in there. And this is the second official year of a competitive swim team. The Village of Bluffton has a phenomenally strong, large, over 100 swimmers in their summer swim program. And uh, some conversations were had with the school district and said, we have a lot of swimmers. These athletes don't do other sports in the winter. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take away from anything. It gives them opportunity and uh, they were able to put a team together, so it's been really great. And wonderful to see how the Bluffton swim community even jumped in to the swim community. They're hosting this meet for the second year, which is certainly a big project, and we are incredibly grateful for all Bluffton is doing. There you go. We are just about finished here, and New Bremen, Annie Jang, is going to do it with a 538-32. There's your winning time for this 500 free. Second place goes to Sierra Rupert of St. Mary's with a 541.67. Annie's final split was a 32 second swim. So just to give you some context, that's faster than what many of these swimmers even swam down and back in. So she did that for 500 yards consistently. Pretty impressive. Great swim, Sierra Rupert. Great time drop for her. Um, you know, don't can't guarantee that seed time is real fresh, but 5:50:04 and she finished with a 5:41:67. That's a big time drop for this event. Third place, Marissa Beckett from Ottawa Glendorf with a 5:44:99. And here's who we have now in this fastest heat. Tyson Rosengarten from Ottawa Glendorf in lane one. Bradley Triplett from St. Mary's in lane two. Colin Steffen from Ottawa Glendorf in lane three. Alex Honigford, your current record holder in this event here in this meet from Wapakoneta in four. Reese Triplett from St. Mary's in five. Avery Rohr from New Bremen in six. Daniel Coe from Shawnee in seven. And Dylan Geiswine from Ottawa Glendorf in lane eight. Yeah, it was a year ago at this meet that uh, Alex Honingford was, a, I think, a write-in for this event. He was not, or no time. He was in no time, I think, for this event. Jumped in, did the 500, and set the meet record. And it, we'll see if he can break his own meet record today or not. I think this was also possibly the meet a year ago where someone looked at me and said, I didn't know Alex Honingford swim the 500. And I said, well, you know, he's gone to state in the 50 and the 100. And, you know, why not just throw the 500 into that little group? I know that uh, Alex, you know, was looking to be a collegiate swimmer. So at this stage of the game, you got to kind of expand your portfolio. There's a lot of college sprinters around, You're but the, right. the mid-distance sprinter or the mid-distance swimmers are not as frequent. So, you know, just gives you more opportunities at different colleges if you have a more events that you can swim well in. You know, and people like to kind of rag on the 500 in a sense. That's probably not the best term to use, but I can't help but think about Bobby Fink in the Olympics watching his long distance races were some of the most fun races in yes. that Olympics, watching him come from behind and win. Really put a, a good stamp on long distance swimming. In the Olympics though, the 500 may not be that much of a yeah, long distance. Yeah, no, it's a mid distance <laughs> at that point. 
Alex Hollingford with a strong lead at this point. 29-7-2 was his split with that last lap. Um, we're going to see if he's going to just hold on to last year's record. Is he going to break the record? Is someone else going to come up and win? We don't know yet. We're still going. You've got some results, though, that you can read as we are watching him continue to lead in the pool. Yeah, I will read the team results as up, up to the, the 500s. Uh, so this does not include anything, um, obviously, from this race. This is for the men. St. Mary's is in 10th with 57 points. Ninth place is Bath High School with 57 and a half points. Eighth is Kenton with 67. Seventh place goes to Van Wert High School with 72. Fifth place is a tie between Wayne High School with 77 points and Salina High School with 77 points. Fourth place goes to Sydney High School with 80. Third place is Shawnee High School, 93 and a half. Second place, Bluffton High School for the men, 120. And first place, Wapakoneta High School with 162 points. This is about halfway through the meet. Hopkinetta boys have been so powerful for the past few years, and that continues this year. Another strong crew, and they're not all seniors. Alex here we're watching is a senior, but they've got guys coming up. I know your son has trained with them many times as well. Yeah, the Wapak boys uh, train with the Lima swimmers. Uh, this year they came to the Lima Y team. It's great to have them. We're excited about the Y relays that we're going to have this year okay. with uh, a combination of swimmers from Bluffton and Wapak. All right, Alex Honigford continues with his lead, but we're watching second place, which is close between lanes two and three. Brady Triplett of uh, St. Mary's and Colin Steffen from Ottawa Glendorf. Two freshmen. Colin looks to have the slight lead, but you know flip turns can change that. He came out with a little bit lead ahead. So those are your guys vying right now for second and third place. Alex Honigford about to make a lap here meaning he's lapping the competitor to his left. Not actually an uncommon thing to happen in the 500. It happens a lot more than people might realize. I've been watching Alex splits times, and they are phenomenally spot on. He clearly has a good pace down that he knows how to swim this event. And Alex Honigford right now is about to lap the individuals who are vying for second place at the moment. So you are watching that. You know. We don't always realize who we have here. We know that the Honigford boys are great swimmers. We know that Alex is a phenomenal swimmer. But this is someone you want to watch now because who knows what he's going to do in college. Yeah, and I bet. And he steps that up to that next level. Absolutely. And, you know, whether he goes D1, D2, or maybe decides to stop swimming, I don't think he will, but that's always a possibility. He already has went back into his sprint going into his final lap. So he's trying to break his record, I think. Uh -huh. So one more lap for Alex Honigford. At this point, I predict no one is going to be able to catch him in this race since he's lapped every single person that we have right now. 29 second uh, split again. He's consistently staying below that 30 second mark and he's picking up here and going faster as he finishes it out. All right, no record broken today for Alex. 452.89 is where he finishes. He is your winner in the boys' 500 free. Nice wave to uh, cap out his senior swimming at this event. He still has more events yet, but in this race, got the winning. Now we got to see who's going to get second place. So that's the next race that we're chasing. Looks like Brady Triplett from St. Mary's might be your person to watch. Brady is such a strong swimmer. He's a freshman. Um, in many strokes, he's very good. Two triplets in this race here. We've talked about Reese Triplet before. Brady Triplet here, and he's your second place finisher. 5.35.41. Third place, another freshman, freshman Colin Stuffin from Ottawa Glamour, 5.37.46. And fourth place is going down to Avery Roar, another freshman from New Bremen. 547.24. All right, don't go too far away. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's one of the most fun events in a swim meet. It's going to be the girls and then the boys 200 freestyle relay when we return. You're watching the Holiday Swimming Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Thanks for watching on WOSN.
Welcome back to the 2022 Bluffton Holiday Invite. Sponsored here on WLSN by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We also want to remind you, if you enjoy what you're watching and want to have a chance to watch WOSN from anywhere at any time, you'd like our WOSN streaming service. We now are streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 annual donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. That is less than $10 a month for 24-7 local sports. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. Here we are. It's now heat five of six in the girls' 200-yard freestyle relay. In lane one, it's Ottawa Glendorf, Alexa Fortman with the leadoff. Lane two, Kenton Riley Hunt, your leadoff swimmer. St. Henry A, three, Alyssa Stammen. By the way, that was OGB in lane one. Kenton A in two, St. Henry A in three. Elida A in fourth with Avery Bowers leadoff. Van Wert A in five with Haley Childs. Botkins A in six with Andrea Judy. Salina A in seven, Michelle Elston, and Piqua A in eight, Olivia Friend. This is heat five of six. This is the 200 free relay, so each of the four swimmers will swim a 50 down and back. And there's multiple ways to stack this. Some people put their anchors at the beginning. Some people put their anchors at the end. I'd like to say that Elida was doing that with Avery. You can see she's in the lead right now. But they've got Arlie Amsbroker as their anchor. So they've got a great leadoff and anchor in this relay. I would say the Elida team has four phenomenal swimmers. <laughs> Absolutely. You're right. Ali Sharp and Vivian Elrod, both freshmen, but with many years' experience swimming for the Y team, swimming USA meets, all the things needed to be prepared for a good high school career. You see Ali Sharp there wearing the tech suit and leading the way in this heat. Yeah, the Elida swimmers, you couldn't go wrong in any combination of how you swam those four girls. But lane six is strong as well, which is the Botkins team. That's right. We've been talking about Botkins quite a bit today. We started with Andrea Judy. Aubrey Top was next. Avery Hanby is their third swimmer. And Bella Butillo, they'll be anchoring with a the freshman. They've got two freshmen finishing out that team. Vivian and you can see that swimmer from Botkins is trying to challenge Vivian Elrod from Elida. That's right. Vivian is a freshman in Elida. She also was a diver early on in her career. Oh, that's pretty neat. She's also very good at 4-H activities as well. Really skilled at 4-H. All right, Arlie Amspoker's in the water looking very smooth. Swimming above the water there. You know, that is a, that's a philosophy that my, my daughter, who was a, a, both my daughters, but my daughter Grace was taught to do the same thing. And you can see how that just allows her to glide on the water. But, ooh, take a look at lane six. Very close, won't get her though. It's Elida with the lead or the win in this heat, 151.50. Remember that time, 151.50. And Botkins coming in second with a 153.04. 26.117 was the split for Arlie Emspoker. Couple 25 splits in there as well for some of those anchors. Very nice race by these ladies. And now for our final heat, heat six of six. In lane one, it's Ada Carly Oldfield, the state qualifying swimmer with the leadoff. Lane two, Callie Sutton from Wapakoneta leadoff. That's Wapak A. Lane three, Versailles A. Lily Cordier leadoff. Bluffton's leading off with Allison Diller. In lane four, Shawnee has another state qualifier. Their qualifier, Addison Newman, in leadoff for lane five. Ottawa Blanders, Willow Horman leading off in six. Four recoveries, Joelle Kelp in seven. And Wayne's Mara Brooks in eight. No surprise that Addie Newman is going to take the first leg of this with a 25-41. 25-41. Now, I would venture to say she isn't overly happy about that split time. She has been in the low 24s before, but considering that we are in the winter break, and uh, she's already been swimming quite a bit, including that uh, longer race earlier today, I'll take the 25. Shawnee is... No, is that, no, is that? Bluffton. Bluffton. Bluffton's Jenna Downey, who finished second in the 50 for earlier today, caught her team up, and now Ella Armstrong, who we talked about earlier with her progression throughout the year, is 
kicking things in for Bluffton. So Bluffton in the lead. Versailles over there. Lydia Hack trying very hard to counter. It's going to come down to our anchors. We've got Izzy Steckshilly for Bluffton, Tiana Mesher for Versailles, and Kayla Frost for Shawnee. Tiana just has such a strong underwater. Izzy Steckschulte is a great swimmer. She has got to kick it in here to stay in front of Tiana because her underwater is coming strong. You watch Tiana with that super powered 100 free breaking the record earlier today. Look at Izzy Steckschulte really trying to hold on to a powerful swimmer. But it's Tiana Mesher who brings it home for Versailles. She gets the win, the team gets the win. 24-18 was her split. Not 24 a 18. That's a great split. First place Versailles, second place Bluffton, third place Shawnee, fourth place Fort Recovery, fifth place Ada, sixth place Wapakoneta, and seventh place Otto Glendorf. of four. In lane one, we will have Piqua. Evan Clark, a sophomore, will lead off for Piqua A. In lane two, it'll be Wayne. James Zabinden, a senior, with the lead off in lane, or lane A. Lane three, it's Bath A with Lucas Bell. Lane four, Kenton A with Tommy Mustang. Lane five, Shawnee B with Alex McGuire. Lane six, Marion Local A with Simon Partington. Lane seven, Botkins A with Gavin Sanchez. And lane eight, Versailles B, Ethan Rao. Every one of these relay teams is coming in at 154 or below. Several are in the 148 range, which would have put them close to beat into that fast heat. So it'll be interesting to see if we can get some time drops here among these uh, relay teams. Wow, second swimmers in the water. Bath and Kenton both looking really close, but a nice uh, dive over there in lane six. That was Marion Local. Luke Conkler really moved them along with his, with his dive in. And all those splits were under 30 seconds for every one of those swimmers. Kenton continuing to lead this heat. Remember, this is heat three of four. No, I take that back. That's not Kenton down to the bottom of the screen in an area that I can hardly see from where I am. It's lane seven with Botkins challenging Kenton. That flip turn brought them out pretty close to each other, but I think Kenton has it at the moment with Wyatt Kendall. It's gonna be, uh, Kenton definitely got off the blocks first. Let's see, oh, the underwaters. Makes there. such a difference. Take a look at Carson Hooper from Botkins as he is kicking it in there. But what's going to happen underwater? Because that tells the story. They came out about the same. They did. Kenton's Carter Hale with a good underwater swim. Very smooth stroke. Which one's going to take it? Kenton. Kenton with a 142.54 to win this heat. Botkins with a 142.58.04 difference in this heat. This is heat three of four. Now time for the fastest heat in this race. And this is heat four of four. In lane one, it's Bluffton. Bluffton A, Landon Armstrong, Jacob Lehman, CJ McCall, and Charles Wright. Lane two, Van Wert A, Jaden Welker, Sam Howe, Griffin Gunter, and Owen Scott. Lane three, Salina A, Brock Lally, Jack Jang, Aaron Dosick, and Jackson Newcomb. Lane four, Wapakoneta A, Owen Becker, Gannon Casebolt, Luke Weirwell, and Alex Honigford. Lane five, Shawnee A, Mason Latham, Thomas Coe, Connor Latham, and Wyatt Mallet. Lane six, Ottawa Glendorf A, Jace Utrup, Colin Flukiger, Colin Steffen, and Grady Steffen. Lane seven, Sydney A, Braxton Brewer, Connor Simpson, Andrew Boniface, and Jarrett Payne. And lane eight, Versailles A, Zach Ahrens, Daniel Waymeyer, Alex Nelson, and Michael Menke. It's getting loud in here, Robin. It is. <laughs> Owen Becker in four, Jaden Welker in two. I think Jaden Welker might have it right here as the second swimmers swim, jump in. Sam Howe 
in two for Van Wert. Gannon Casebolt in four for Wapak. Two very strong swimmers. Yeah, no, it's uh, Gannon and Sam are pretty much in sync with their strokes. And I'd say they're about the same body size, too, height-wise. <laughs> All right, Griffin Gunter is the third swimmer for Van Wert. Luke Weirwell is the third swimmer for Wapak. So Luke Weirwell, of course, who we've already seen multiple times today, is getting ready to hand this off to Alex Honigford. The record is 128.28, set back in 2011. 128.28 is the record. Can this foursome break that record? I think there's a good chance. Alex Honigford, who just finished swimming the 500 not very no. long ago, actually. Yeah. He probably was reserving something for this point. People are on their feet. Look at this oh. go. Oh, no nope. record broken today, but a strong win by the Wapakoneta A team, 131 93. Second place. Oh, it's a fight for third, guys. And you might hear the stands, they are going crazy. Wapak. First, Salina second, Versailles third, and Sydney fourth. That's the boys 200 free relay, and we'll be right back after this. Hello, I'm here with the Wapak boys who just won the 200 free relay. How about you first all introduce yourselves? Uh, Alex Huntingford, Gannon Casebolt, Luke Rewill, Owen Becker. All right, here, Owen, I'll start with you. How did you feel about the race coming into it? Because, I mean, you guys were well ahead on your times already, so did you have a plan to just beat your time, or...? Yeah, I felt like I should. I could have done better, but I mean, I've I did well for what I've swam today, so. That's okay. How about you? What did you think about it? I thought it was pretty good. I didn't have the greatest split, but we'll be better. I'll okay. be better. There you go. That's a good answer. Okay, then I'm going to ask you two about your individual runs. So you just won the 500 by a long run. What do you do when you're beating everybody? How do you motivate yourself to still get like a PR or a fast time? I uh, just shut my shut my mind off. Don't think, and just I just swim. I just. Just let it come naturally, and it happens. So that's a good answer. Okay, so you did you did you win all four of your events today? Uh, yes. So was your plan to come in here and sweep? Uh, I don't know that that was the plan, but I definitely was coming in here ready to work my hardest. So it worked out. Thank you so much. Good job, you guys today. For the girls 100 yard backstroke heat 10 of 10 here at the 2022 Bluffton Holiday Invite. You're watching it on WOSN. The Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. In heat 10, we have in lane one, Zoe Wilkson of Wayne. Lane two, Lydia Hecht of Versailles. Lane three, Bella Buccio of Botkins. Lane four, Lily Baumgartner of Ada. Lane five, Taylor Knott of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane six, Ava Shardo of Versailles. Lane seven, Arlie Amspoker of Elida. And lane eight, Harley Eilerman of Fort Laramie. And Robin, it's important to note that the record was a one minute point four four set back in 2013. And Lily Baumgartner comes in with a one minute point four nine as her seed time. And don't count out Taylor Knott, which is in lane five right next to Lily Baumgartner. That's she right. may have a really strong finish here. And the thing that's great about swimming against someone like Lily Baumgartner, who is a very solid swimmer, is other swimmers love to use that pole because they know that is a great chance to be able to reach out for that, to really pull them. Right now in second place, though, it's Bella Bucho from Botkins. A freshman from Botkins. We've said her name a few times, so that's a swimmer to be watching in years to come. There goes Lily. Let's see if she can break it. What's going on in her mind? 59-40. Folks at home, if you could understand what is happening right now, because Emily Murphy, who set this record back in 2013, was setting records, every single record there was, she was setting. Those records have stood until now. Lily Baumgartner just took down a second one with a 59-40 today. Second place, Botkins Buccio with a 101.64. Third place, Elida's Arlie Amspoker. 
Moving now to heat six of six in the boys' 100-yard backstroke. And we have in lane one, Avery Rohr of New Bremen. In lane two, Isaac Wachoff of Wapakoneta. Lane three, Jaden Welker of Van Wert. Lane four, Owen Becker of Wapakoneta. Lane five, Jackson Bolas of Bluffton. Lane six, Mason Latham of Shawnee. Lane seven, Griffin Lukey of St. Mary's. And lane eight, Jace Utrup of Ottawa Glandorf. And right out of the gate on the first 25, it's between Jackson Bolas and Owen Becker. Jackson Jackson been, had a longer underwater there. Yeah, he yeah. Has, he's been working on his underwaters. Look at those three right there. Jaden Welker, Owen Becker, and Jackson Bolas, who I believe all swim together on the same Hawaii team. They don't? do, yes. Jackson Bolas with a nice underwater there coming out. The freshman taking the lead here as he gets ready for his final flip turn. Watch underneath. Owen Becker, does he know where Jackson is, I'm wondering. All right, this is coming down to the end, but it looks like the freshman from Bluffton may get it, and he did a 56-03 for Jackson T. Bolas from Bluffton. Second place is Owen Becker of Wapakoneta and Jaden Walker of Van Wert finishing in third. I want to say congratulations to my cohort over here, Robin Bolas. That was her son, a freshman. You know, it's always great for mom to be able to watch your son do that. And I'm glad I went back home after he got here to get his tech suit, his special tech suit, so he could have it on for that race. Event 21, the girls' 100-yard breaststroke, heat seven of seven. Lane one, Caroline Whitlatch of New Bremen. Lane two, Allison Diller of Bluffton. Lane three, Ansley Newman of Shawnee. Lane four, Audra Bupp of Fort Recovery. Lane five, Quinn Leifeld of St. Henry. Lane six, Elena Rindler of Versailles. Lane seven, Kiera Knapke of Coldwater. And lane eight, Lexi Hansen of Minster. This is a great heat. They're all very tight together. In the breaststroke, that last underwater before they come up, that's called the pullout, where they push their both their arms down, and you'll notice that they will get a lot of propulsion going through the water before they come up and break the surface. That is the way that you win this event, is by your pullout. This is definitely different than any of the other strokes. In style, everything, um, such a different concept for swimming. And you talk about pullout, that really benefited there in lane six. Elena Rindler of Versailles was not in the lead, but that pullout brought her out. Yeah, let's see if she can do it again on this last turn. With Audra Bupp was leading. Looks like uh, Versailles with a slight lead at the turn. She's continuing to hold the lead. Let's see how they come down the stretch. Looks like she's going to hold on. Versailles, we've been saying the Versailles name all day long, and at the break, they were leading in the women, if I remember correctly, and they just added a few more points to their score there with a first place finish by Elena Rindler of Versailles. Rindler, Rindler? Elena, I'd love to know how to properly say your name. The time, winning time, 113 70 second. Second place, Audra Buck from Fort Recovery with a time of 114 60. Heat six of six. This is our final individual event in the Bluffton Holiday Invite, and it is the fastest heat, or intended to be the fastest heat, of the boys' 100 breaststroke. We have in lane one, Carter Cleaves of Shawnee. Lane two, Reese Triplett of St. Mary's. Lane three, Grady Steffen of Ottawa Glendorf. Lane four, Ross Honigford of Wapakoneta. Lane five, Zach Ahrens of Versailles. Lane six, Riley Verb of Bluffton. Lane seven, Corey Rigel of Wayne. And lane eight, Carson Dingle of cold water. I'd say this is a pretty stacked heat here. This is. This is going to be a fun one to watch, and these guys are probably all going to turn around here in a minute and do the 400 relay as well. You're so. right, and that's coming up next. They will have four heats of the girls to at least give them a little breather. Uh, cup, there's three heats of the boys, so maybe six heats, but, but they're pushing things out, everything they've got. Currently, Zach, Zach Aaron's Zach from, Aaron's from Versailles. Riley Verb is right on him, though. Riley Verb is a phenomenal second-half swimmer. Both of these guys have been to state in swim. Zach still has the lead at the moment. Riley pushing right there next to him, and now it's going to come down to the final 25.
Yep. Here, comes, here comes Ross Honingford back too as well. Ross Honingford as well as Reese Triplett over there in lane two. Rosales gets first, Bluffton gets second, Wapak gets third, and St. Mary's gets fourth. I'm here with the winner of the 100-yard breaststroke. Do you mind telling us who you are? I'm Zach Arns. How was that race for you? You, you started out like yeah. with a pack, and then you eventually yeah. took that lead by a small margin. Yeah, I got really tired at the end, but I just had to uh, push through. I knew it was going to be close, so. Now, it was, since it was, you knew it was going close, what was your plan? To start off soft and then um, push at the end, or just try to maintain and... What like, energy you had left to get through it? Yeah, I, I feel like I started off pretty strong. Um, I kind of died at the end, but I just had to keep the technique. I was really focusing on my kick, trying to keep that kick going strong, because then I could get my arms around faster, and I think that's what's helped me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I hope, <laughs> I hope your team does well this Yeah, week. for sure. Thanks. No problem. Welcome back, WOSN viewers, to the Holiday Swimming Invitational, which is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We also want to remind you that our sponsors only sponsor a portion of the costs of our event. We are a nonprofit organization, and TV44 and WOSN welcome your donations as a way to say thank you for broadcasting events just like this one. And this one is the final portion of our swim meet. This is heat four of four in the girls' 400-yard freestyle relay. In the water now in lane one, it's Bluffton with Ella Armstrong. Lane two, New Bremen, Olivia Heitkamp. Lane three, Wayne, Zoe Wilkson. Lane four, Ottawa Glendorf, Morgan Mag. Lane five, Coldwater, Kelsey Brandon. Lane six, Willow Horman for Ottawa Glendorf B. Lane seven, Wapakoneta A, Joey Muller. And lane eight, Versailles, Emma Meyer A. Each swimmer will swim a 100 freestyle down and back twice. This is a tough event to have after a long day. A Absolutely. lot of these swimmers have done their max swims for the day. This is their last one. They've been here since early in the morning about, I know the Bluffton bus left the high school at 7.05 a.m. Well, and warm up started at eight o'clock. 35 teams here. We had to get everybody in and out of the water between eight and about 9.40, I would say, 9.50, 9.45 and it has been a long day with a lot of swimming. It looks like it's gonna be real close, but lane three I'm gonna call is gonna come in first. That's the team from Wayne, and then Ottawa Glandor is on their heels, and out of the water comes Carlos Abby Kloss from Ottawa Glandor. That's right, she jumped into the lead right away from that point out of the water, and Ottawa Glandorf comes into this race with the fastest seed time at 4.02.63. The closest one next to them is Coldwater with a 4.05.87. Right now, we don't see cold water threatening, but Ottawa Glandorf currently in the lead. Wayne is second, but New Bremen tying the first second right now. That flip turn looked to be just about the same. And coming out of the water, New Bremen now. Caroline Whitlatch takes her team into second place. Yeah, cold water's making a comeback now after that last turn there. And I tell you what, I should not have uh, said anything about, uh, yeah, anything about cold water because they did, like you said, the turn jumped in and suddenly we almost have a, we do have a three-way tie for first place. New Bremen in two, Ottawa Glandorf in four, Coldwater in five, now in first, getting ready to hand off to Izzy Byer. Coldwater leading now with the third swimmer making their way in. That's Taylor, it's Izzy Beyer for Coldwater. Taylor Knott is swimming for Ottawa Glandorf. Their anchor will be Marissa Beckett, who is definitely a very powerful swimmer. So don't count OG out yet. In fact, let's see what happens at this flip turn because OG is pretty close. Yeah, Taylor Knott really picked it up on that last turn back there and, and closed the gap. But New Bremen is hanging in there in lane two. The 100 freestyle, it is a sprint and it is a gut-wrenching sprint because the second 50, you just have to hold on and keep going. And look what just happened in that last flip turn. We now have a flip of leadership. Ottawa Glandorf has moved back into the lead. Taylor Knott uh, got ready to pan that over to Marissa Beckett. 
in a half body length first place lead. And Marissa Beckett, we've watched her for many years. She is so strong in this, in this stroke at this distance. Marissa Beckett from Ottawa Glendorf in first place. Kiera Gnapke of Coldwater in second place. Annie Jang, who we've talked about many times already, is your anchor right now for New Bremen, and she is in third place. The 500 free winner, the 200 free winner, and now kicking it in in 100 as well. But leading stronger, it's Ottawa Glandorf. Yeah, I'd say New Bremen is definitely closing the gap on second place. Uh, OG, Marissa Beckett is probably going to have it handled, but the question is going to be who's going to be in second. Look, Annie Jan's coming in. It's sure been fun to watch Annie Jan swim these last four years. Grateful for many opportunities to call her races. Otto Glander wins first. Jan brings it in for a new Bremen for a second place finish just ahead of Coldwater, who finishes in third. Now we'll watch the rest of the racers make their way in to finish this heat. I'm here with the OG girls team that just won the 400 uh, free. Uh, can you all introduce who you are? I'm Marissa Beckett. I'm Taylor Connaught. I'm Abby Class. I'm Morgan Mag. And you started the race as the first like right. What was your plan going into the race? Um, just to attack the whole 100. And then uh, towards the end there, you guys were like a head-to-head -head battle with Coldwire. Did you, did you just try to do your whole race or you just wanted to get that win? Um, we kind of wanted to get that dub, so yeah. Well, Taylor got me in the lead. She had a nice last 25, so I just went after it. I hoped for the best. We have reached the point of our final heat of this entire event. We're finishing things off with the boys 400 yard freestyle relay and this is heat three of three. In lane one, Versailles is leading off with Zach Ahrens. In lane two, Bath leads off with Lucas Bell. Lane three, St. Mary's, Marcus McLean is your leadoff. Lane four, Bluffton, Landon Armstrong. Lane five, Wapakoneta, Alex Honigford. Lane six, Ottawa Glendorf, Tyson Rosengarten. Lane seven, Wayne, Jake Fernandez. And lane eight, Shawnee, Aiden Latham. Looks like they're having a problem with the timer. All right, that was a test, testing things out. You know, we made it through this entire meet without a timer issue. Uh, now we are at the very last race in the entire meet. So they're having, uh, changing out the starter, the technical elements of the starter here. <laughs> so it looks like we had a bunch of teenage boys that were clapping yeah. and doing the things they do, yes. but they were told, no, 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 we gotta hold out here, just wait. Of course, this is no fun for uh, guys to have to be stuck here waiting, yeah. but there's nothing else they can do is they're wanting this thing to work. So Jen, we've talked about it all day, the strategy piece of swimming. You can have practice, you can have talent, but at the end of the day in big meets and big events like this one, it comes down to strategy. And what order are you gonna swim your swimmers in? You can do a normal anchor or you can do a reverse anchor, meaning your fastest swimmer goes first. And let's take a guess right now on which team has chosen to do the reverse anchor method. <laughs> How about the one that's leading at the moment? Not to say that Walpock doesn't have a good relay, but they did choose to lead off with Alex Honigford, and we know his strength in his sprinting. Yes, he is a wonderful sprinter. And going into this with the seed times, the Bluffton team in lane four actually has the, the faster time, the 332.09, and Wapak has the 333.40.
Bluffton beat them last week up at Bowling Green, but it was a different order of swimmers last week. And you also have a different strategy going as well, because Bluffton has chosen to put some of their faster swimmers toward the end. Yes, last week, uh, Riley Verb was against Alex, and now we've switched that order on the Bluffton team, and Riley will be the anchor today. So we can see some catch up. It will depend on how far Walpock is ahead, if they're still ahead at this point. St. Mary's Memorial also can't be forgotten. They started with Marcus McLean. They then went with Brady Triplett, two strong swimmers again, Griffin Lipke and then Reese Triplett, and they're anchoring with Reese Triplett. Bluffton now starting to make the catch up on St. Mary's here. Yeah, Xavier Diller is in the water right now. He is more of a mid-distance and a distance swimmer, but he is really good at this event. Yeah, Jackson Bullis will be coming up next for Bluffton, a strong sprinter that we've seen. He's on the block getting ready. Julian Jordan is your swimmer for Wapak. Um, so we've got St. Mary still in second. Jackson just dove off and pretty much made up the ground right there with the dive. But um, Griffin Lupke is not wanting to give that to him very easily. No, we'll see how the underwaters do. Julian Jordan uh, has a commanding lead that he was take over there, but we'll see if these two guys, other guys, can close the lead any. Looks like Bluffton has now taken that second spot by just a tad. Jackson Bullis, we saw him win the backstroke not long ago, and now he is picking up the lead over St. Mary's as that St. Mary's swimmer is trying to pick that back up. Last turn, that was a fast flip turn by Jackson Bullis. Wow. Yeah, he, uh, I call that short shooting. I don't know what the technical term is, but, um, you know, some swimmers will go in hard to get a good push off the wall. He sometimes likes to turn and get just a barely push off the wall. So we saw Jackson make up good ground over Wapak, and now we've got Riley Verb versus Gannon Casebolt for Wapakoneta here. St. Mary's is anchoring with Reese Triplett, yes. and take a look what's happening, and people are screaming and jumping. How and fun. Don't count out Reese Triplett. He is a strong second half swimmer. He may come back and take them both over. All right, it's still Wapak at the flip turn. Gannon Casebolt with a very, very slight lead. Riley Verb is trying and trying, and it's getting loud for your free relays where you lose a lot of your swimmers or your, your fans, but they are on their feet now at this yes. point. These guys, the Bluffton guys and the Walpock guys, they train together, they swam together all their life. Riley Verb is pulling ahead. Let's see if we can out-touch him again. It's going hey, back. he did. Bluffton, A is your winner in 329.65. Both teams had to drop time to win this one. Bluffton A, the team of Landon Armstrong, Xavier Diller, Jackson Bullis, and Riley Verb, they get first place in the 400 free relay. Your second place, Alex Honigford, Isaiah Walkoff, Julian Jordan, and Gannon Casebolt, Wapak A, second, and St. Mary's Memorial, Marcus McLean, Brady Triplett, Griffin Lukey, and Reese Triplett, third place for St. Mary's. That is it from the 2022 Bluffton Holiday Invite. We one more time will remind you that our great uh, key sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We have been pleased to show a lot of Mercer County teams as well as many other teams at this special event. For Robin Bullis, Megan Sherrick, Chloe Waddle, Jacob O'Neill, Abby Beck, and Nick Fraley, I'm Jennifer Beck, broadcasting from the Lima YMCA Natatorium at the 2022 Bluffton Holiday Invite. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for watching WOSN.